welcome to the podcast. Notice I didn't say the Well That's Good podcast because this is a new type of show that we're gonna have on the podcast called the Sisters and Friends Show. So this is gonna be really exciting where I'm just gonna have on girls who are my real life sisters and friends and we're gonna talk about conversations and start conversations about things that we are all going through as sisters, as girls in this big world. And you know, I was just thinking about how so many times in the podcast and Well That's Good or just in life, I reference and I give the advice, you know, if you're struggling, like go to a sister, go to a friend, go to your community, go to your mom, go to whoever. And I realized that not everybody has that yet. Maybe um, not everybody has a sister. They don't have that friend who loves the Lord, who they can go to about stuff. They don't have, you know, maybe a good mentor in their life. And so hopefully we can be a sense of that from afar. Hopefully you can dive into some of our conversations, listen in and get advice. We're also just going to be goofy because that's who we are. We're going to have some conversations conversations that might not have any meaning to anything, but hey, isn't that the kind of conversations you have with your friends anyways? Um, I'm so excited. The first two guests I have on are Courtney and Stephanie, which I never call them that. They are Court and Steph, and they are two of my closest sisters and friends. We've been friends and uh, for about five years. Yeah. And they uh, not only are my sisters and friends, we work together. We started LO basically together five years ago and have built everything that we're doing now. And it's just so fun to do life with y'all. So thanks for being my first guest. Thanks for having us. For real. I'm honored. I feel so honored. This when- is also kind of funny too because basically um, the whole um, prep for this podcast is hashtag wing it. So yeah. they're like, so what are we going to talk about? I'm like, I have no idea. We're going to wing it. Yes. <laughs> it. Well, also, it's been quite a week for you. So there hasn't been a lot of time to just sit down and be like, oh, what are we actually going to talk about? Whatever. It's been pretty go, go, go this week. That's true. This is literally my 27th yeah. podcast this week. And That's y'all know crazy. this, for perspective, did I not tell you last year when we were scheduling things, I was like, hey, can you like never book me for like two podcasts a day? Because right. more than two, because two feels a little bit overwhelming. And this week I've done 27. <laughs> it's like, what, what, five or six oh, average man. a day? <laughs> yeah, six on average my every bad. day. Um, yeah, Steph. My Come bad. On, Steph. Where's that scheduling? What, how did that happen? Just, you had a lot to say this week, though. The book came out. The book came out. Woo! I don't know. That was exciting. No, that, that, was a good time. that actually was a lot, though. Yeah. I, I, didn't, I don't know how you do that. Well, now you're doing it. Now you're on the podcast. Well, I don't have 29 more to go. How does it feel to be in the hot seat? <laughs> a little nervous. Yeah. Court. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Are you nervous? Steph Man, doesn't get nervous. I don't, Let's I don't be think honest. I'm nervous. Steph. I would be nervous if this was like we were on a stage in front of a bunch of people, yeah. maybe. Yeah. But not right now because it's just you guys. Yeah. And you yeah. guys are easy. You Steph, know, you okay, what people. scenario in life would actually make you nervous? Um, I'm actually very interested in this. Gosh. If I was in charge, like, if I was in charge of something that involved, like, a wild animal or a snake or something, well, I would be very that's nervous. That's valid. Or if I had to get up and, like, give a full, like, message like what you do. That would make me really nervous. Yeah. I can get up in front of people and, like, give direction or be like, this is what we're yeah. doing. This is the plan. Yeah. This is the thing. Like, because I feel confident in knowing those details. Yeah. But I... What you do actually would make me nervous. That public speaking is literally the number one fear that people have. So yeah. that's valid. Yeah. And I'm scared of sharks. So you're scared of snakes. Yeah. I'm scared of sharks. That's real too. You have very valid fears. Okay? Thank you. But Thank Court, you. you get more nervous about things. I get nervous about everyday things. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I remember you said that book, it's like, how to not be like socially awkward or something. Yeah. And I was like, Court, that's so cute. Why? Did you're you not really awkward. Have that book? Yeah, I totally had that book, like, years ago when we first lived together and worked together. But you're yeah, not awkward. Like, uh, thank you. Thank you for saying that. I would that. have never That's thought that about right you. There. No, I feel like everyday small things can make me really nervous. Like, when I first met Sadie, like, if I would, like, fumble or, like, say something or, like, even around my friends, like, get embarrassed myself, I would, like, get so nervous. Yeah. But, like, y'all have really taught me, like, it's okay to laugh at yourself. Yeah. Like, it's okay. Yeah. So, yeah. like, y'all, y'all really help that out. True friends. Look, that's real though. And I actually used to be like that. Like I had so much self-doubt. Like I'd go through my day and then I'd just keep being like, oh, that was so stupid. Why did I say that? Or like that did not come out right. Or Mm -hmm. what did you – and like it really affected even the people around me because I needed so much affirmation. Like I was kind of like that when we first became friends and stuff. But even like with Christian, sometimes I'll still do it. I'll be like, hey, whenever I said this earlier on the phone with that person, did that sound weird? And he's like, no, like just chill, you know. And I remember like so many people speaking over me like – 
no more self-doubt. Just like stop doubting yourself. But yeah. I actually heard um, on the podcast a few weeks ago, Ben Stewart, he said that um, instead of like shaming yourself, be curious about yourself. <laughs> and I've been doing that this week. We're like, I'll say something. And I'll be like, why did I do that? Instead of doing that, I'll be like, why did I? Why did I say mm-hmm. that? Like, or why am I like questioning that? And then normally you can give yourself a rational answer like, oh, I don't know, maybe I was tired or maybe I was like nervous for no reason or whatever, you know? I thought that was good. It is interesting to like take a minute and pause because then it's like once you do have that realization like was I tired or was I whatever, it does allow you to move on so much faster. Yeah, true. But we're so, yeah, that that was such good advice that Ben gave because I think I'm often too afraid to actually just sit in my thoughts and ask myself that question like Mm -hmm. why did I do that? Because then you think you're going to be like more embarrassed. (gasps) Right, right. Where then you're like, actually, no, I can just deal with it and move on. Totally. Yeah. That's good. Okay, so most of what we do is literally to reach college students. Like, obviously, we want to reach all sisters and friends out there and, like, whoever's listening, whatever age, like, we want to be your sister and friend. But a lot of what we do, we put this emphasis on the college student, Mm -hmm. and a lot of that kind of came from you, Court. I remember when you um, first moved to Nashville, we were Mm -hmm. roommates, and we were talking about Live Original and what we want to do and accomplish, and you were like, I have this heart for the college student. And so kind of tell us why. Mm -hmm. Like, why did you have this, like, burning heart for college students? Do you even know why? Yeah, that's such a good question. I feel like it really stemmed from, like, what we're all about is – in college, in that season of life, I feel like I didn't have really great sisters and friends. Mm-hmm. I was, I knew a ton of people, like was always surrounded by people, but yeah. was not actually fully known. Mm. And so I think that really caused like a lack of confidence, like yep. a lack of like true identity in who I was, yeah. um, and really searching that for that in so many other places. And so I think when I think about college students, I'm like, gosh, I wish in college I really had sisters and friends who knew me and accepted me Mm -hmm. for who I am right and I don't have to change that right know, because this is how God's made me and this is what I believe in too and I think that's a really hard time to find that in college right because you're just really just looking for acceptance so many places you know but you know what's so weird is it's like it's so hard to find that but it like there's so many things set up for you to like sororities and like sisterhood and all this stuff right. and like you were even in a sorority mm-hmm. and you liked your sorority and all those things but like I love how you said you were you were around all these people and you might have had this like sorority sisterhood but you didn't feel known by them mm-hmm. and maybe that was because um of you you know not allowing yourself to be in it mm-hmm. or maybe that was because of the just the pressure of being a college student and being cool and being likable and staying relevant and doing all the things and maintaining an image. And that is a hard place to break through all of that mold and just like be who you are. Yes. I think it's so many of those reasons, but I'm curious to hear from both of you. Why do you think that is like, why do you think there are so many opportunities for college girls to get set up to have friends, but like they still don't. I mean, you touched on it a little bit, but like, because yeah. I'm always, I, I think everybody has their own reasons to why that is, but I'm always shook by how many messages come in, like, the DMs for LO of, like, mm-hmm. how do you have friends or how do you make friends? You guys talk about being sisters and friends. Like, I don't have any. I feel so lonely. Mm-hmm. But you're right. Like, there are so many great avenues. But what do you think it really is that go- makes you move from I'm with people, but now I'm fully known by people? Mm-hmm. Nice. My family loves a good party. Birthdays, holidays, we love a good celebration. And there's just something about having a soda that feels like a celebration no matter where you are. And there's a new kind of soda that you've got to try called Olipop. Olipop has some of my favorite flavors like vintage cola, classic root beer, orange squeeze, cherry vanilla, strawberry vanilla, and their newest flavor, classic grape. My personal favorite is the vintage cola because I honestly love Coke, and this is a great alternative that's much healthier, and it helps me reminisce on all of just the sweet, fun memories of life because, hey, like I said, a soda is just celebration. But the best thing about Olipop is that while it feels like a party, unlike so many other sodas that are full of sugar, corn syrup, and artificial ingredients like aspartame, Olipop is made with natural ingredients that are actually good for you. In fact, they use functional ingredients that combine the benefits of prebiotics, plant fiber, and botanicals to support your microbiome and benefit digestive health. And did you know that 
40% of Americans consume more than the daily recommended added sugar with, which is 30 grams. So that's a lot of sugar that we're consuming and sweetened beverages like soda are the leading source of this problem. Cause if you drink just one soda, it's like surpassing that already. Olipop has only two to three grams of sugar from natural ingredients and no added sugar. The vintage cola, which tastes just like it sounds, is only two grams of sugar while a regular Coca-Cola contains 39 grams of sugar. A lot more, obviously. Likewise, their orange squeeze has only five grams of sugar compared to orange Fanta, which has 44 grams of sugar. So friends, you can't beat this. This is great, right? And it's honestly so cute. Look at this right here, so cute. All their products are non-GMO, vegan, paleo, and keto friendly with less than eight grams of net carbs per can. And if you love a good soda, give it a try. They're so confident that you will love their products that they offer a 100% money back guarantee for orders placed through their website. So order now and receive a 20% off plus free shipping on your order. Also, I don't drink a lot of caffeine and they are only caffeinated by natural caffeine like green tea, which I really like. Um, I recommended trying uh, the variety pack because they honestly are all super cute and cool and taste good. And if you're not sure what flavor you're gonna like, you can get it that way. This is a great way to try all the delicious flavors. So go to drinkolipop.com slash woe to use the code woe at checkout and claim this deal. That's drink, like D-R-I-N-K, Olipop, O-L-I-P-O-P.com slash woe. Olipop can be found in over 8,000 stores across the country, including Kroger, Target, Whole Foods, Sprouts, and Wegmans. So go check out Olipop today. I think it's just you being real. Mm -hmm. Like, I think it's you busting past that barrier of like, what will they think of me? What will they know me as? Will they not like me? Will yeah. I not be cool? And just being like, hey, I'm Sadie. <laughs> and like, I'm, yeah. I'm a human and I'm struggling with this or I love this. Maybe it's like everyone else is like, I love to go out and I love to party, yeah. And you're like, I like to just like hang with my friends and watch Gilmore Girls, yeah. <laughs> you know, like break the mold. Like yeah. be like, actually, we don't have to do this because I don't like this. This is not even who I am. Um, this is who I am. And normally when you do break the mold and you, you know, stand for your originality or what you believe or just what you like to do, it's amazing how many other people are behind you and are like, me too. Like, I like to do those same things. Yeah, or right. I have been wanting a friend like this. Or like, I actually have been wanting to start a Bible study too. And I've been too scared like who would do it with me. Or mm -hmm. I've been wanting to have like Gilmore Girls nights every Tuesday because I just love it. You know, like right. whatever it is that might seem cheesy or it might yeah. not seem cool. Like if you think it's cool, odds are a lot of other people probably do too, you mm -hmm. know, and you just have to lead that and own that. And I think like building community, it starts with you, you know, like, yeah. I was thinking about this, like, I've been kind of talking about this a lot, about how building is a hard process, and mm -hmm. we've been wanting to start our house for so long, we're about to start building, and building is hard, and it takes intentionality, and it has taken us a year to even start building, you know, and I think in the same sense, it's like that with community, it's like, oh, we want friends, we want friends, we yeah. want friends, we want to build a house, we want to build a house, we want to build a house, and eventually you just have to start building, mm -hmm. you know, and then you have to find the people who can do the job, yeah. and so it's the same way, like, once you say, okay, I'm gonna build the house, I'm gonna build this community, this is what I want this to look like, so I'm gonna bring the vision, I'm gonna show up to the, right. to the spot, I'm gonna, you know, um, keep showing up day after day, and all of a sudden you look up and you're like, wow, I built a house. Yes. Like, wow, I built a community. Mm -hmm. And it takes you being intentional. It takes you showing up. It takes you casting a vision and just going for it, you know? Yeah, that's good. I was going to say, too, I think a lot of that is, especially in those college years or when you're like a young adult, early 20s, it's so easy to just follow. Mm -hmm. And I think truly you have to be comfortable just leading like you just said like yeah lead hosting someone yeah instead yeah. of waiting for someone to come to you yes, so totally. you can follow them just be the leader and right. that does takes a little bit of discomfort or it you does. might get some rejection and you know what you probably will you will yeah. you're, fine. you're gonna be fine so I think just like shifting our mindset you know as we're pursuing friendships and as we're pursuing right. community like no matter what season we're in like you have to just be the one to do it mm -hmm. like you said Good. and it I takes like time it. too because it, it is. It's showing up every single time, being intentional. Mm -hmm. But showing up, it, it takes time to build those things. It's mm -hmm. like a culmination of having shared experiences or going on a, a trip or, you know, like, hey, when you go on a trip and you have you come back and you're like, I didn't realize how close we were. Like, even our team retreat, it's like yeah. those shared experiences True. help mm -hmm. build those friendships, or at least they have for me. Totally. But you have to keep 
showing up to those things. You have to say yes. You have to take the invite yeah. or invite the people on the trip or do that. So I love how Two yeah. Mama says uh, forced fun is actually fun. Yes. And like how, you know, you don't think it's going to be fun when you force it, but actually forced fun is fun. Like if you say like, hey, like we're going to play this game, it might be like, oh, this could be, this could kind of crash and burn. But normally it's really fun. Or like when we say like we're going to go on this trip and, you know, even our team retreat, nobody really like, we had not all hung out at the same time together. There were new mm-hmm. girls coming in and like had potential to be awkward but it was so fun and then like we've done so many trips and sometimes it's like oh well we're really busy and you're like should I take the time but it's like it's always worth it you Mm -hmm. know it's always worth it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm thinking about your life because I think that this, because you know, people see. I immediately start laughing when you said I'm thinking about your life. I think about your life. Yeah. Which part? Yeah. Which part? I think about your life. And oh, I want no. you to share your life with everyone. <laughs> no, I, I think that this is relatable though from yeah. a sister and a friend who people could look at you right now and they don't know your whole resume, but they assume you're killing it because you're sitting here on this podcast and I just said you pretty much started LO. You have manage tours Mm -hmm. you have started this podcast you have led this podcast you have done uh, I'm talking about well that's good I'm talking about the one that 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 is successful (laughs) and doing really well you've started all these things and um you live in Nashville you're successful okay when you were in college I know your story it didn't look like the road of success was coming your way (laughs) I'm just saying I'm just being honest no but that's real. real it really did not look like the my college experience was a joke, honestly. Okay, y'all know this, but my <laughs> my freshman year, I was going to Michigan State University. My freshman year, I skipped so much school, I almost like Which didn't so make it into the next semester. Because I was just there to have a good time. Yeah. Genuinely, I remember <laughs> the first week of class, I was in my dorm room, and I'm like looking at my schedule. And I was like, oh, like I have to go to class. Like, classes, like, <laughs> cl- like school. Oh, people go to class at college. Like, I was totally there just to hang. Genuinely had that thought. I know. It, and I can say that because it's yeah. funny now. But, like, my brother went there. So many of my friends from high school went there. And I was just like, this is the next, this is what you, the next thing. And I had yeah. zero thought about, like, actually where my life was going to go or what yeah. God had for me. It was just kind of like, well, this is the next thing I need to do. And... My friends had a chart, and they would put stickers next to it if I went to class, like uh, like as if I was a toddler. That's a good sister. That's friend. a good sister and a Those friend. Those friends like, we gotta to keep you on track. And, and we got to get so through anyway, college. it was it was not a great. I was not thriving my first two years of school. Took a year off, did a, like a ministry internship, which was really good for me, just to kind of pause. Which some people say don't stop during school because you don't go back. But for me, that was what I needed. And I did go back. And during that year, I was like, okay, I need to get serious because Mm. I really felt the call to, I wanted to go to Belmont. I wanted to study music business. I had this shift in my heart of like, no, this is what I want to do. And it literally lit a fire under me Mm. of like, okay, if this is what I want to do, this is what I I feel passionate about and I need to move in that direction. I I don't know how I'm going to get into Belmont. Mm -hmm. My grades are a joke. But somehow God, they're like, I, no, I've also said this too. I wrote a letter with my application to Belmont and said, like, dear admissions committee, I know this doesn't look good, but like, I am begging you to please let me in. Wow. And I got in. And Convincing letter, Steph. Yeah. I wish I could find that letter. It would be really fun to look back at. Awesome. Yeah. And, but I, I took, Bel- I was going to Belmont when I finally got there. I took it so serious. Like, I did not skip class. And there's something I think just that switched to me of like, when you feel motivated about where you're going, Mm -hmm. at least for me, I was like, nothing, I don't want anything to stop me, including myself. Yeah. But yeah, it was not the, it didn't look like something that was going to pan out right for me. But I love how there was a moment where you fought for yourself. Like, I think that's so important because I think a lot of people are like, oh man, I'm just like, I'm losing it. This mm-hmm. is not good. Like, I, I did just come here for the fun. It shows. or And it doesn't just have to be in college. It can be any point in life. I'm right. just like, man, like, I'm not doing what I want to do. I'm not doing the job I want to do. I'm not owning school like I want to own it. Right. I'm not making good grades. I'm not mm-hmm. never going to have the job. And it's like, yeah, you're never going to if you don't try. Like, you're mm-hmm. never going to if you don't work hard for it. And I love how you were like, I got to take ownership of my own life. Like, right. 
no one's going to fight for me but me in this moment. Right. And, like, there's something to, like, you know, trusting God that God's going to do what he can only do, but also working hard with, like, what yes. you've been given, you know? Because, mm-hmm. like, yeah. some of us are just, like, waiting on God to move, and God's like, I'm waiting on you to move. 100%. I'm moving. I'm here. Like, right. you do something. Like, yes. that writing the letter, I think, is super inspiring. So recently, Christian, Honey, and I had a sweet getaway, just the three of us, to unplug and unwind. And along with the much-needed rest, I also learned about a new brand that you need to know about. So in the Airbnb that we were staying at, they had this product that is called Public Goods. This brand is awesome, y'all. I wish you could honestly smell these right now because they smell so good. I actually noticed it from their aesthetics, but then I was like, whoa, this product's actually great. Public Goods is the one-stop shop for sustainable, high-quality, everyday essentials made from clean ingredients at an affordable price. So even the presentation with their clean, simple labels looks like it's so nice sitting in your house, just like I mentioned. Like That's what actually stood out to me at the Airbnb, then I really liked it. I'm not gonna lie, it makes um, even the bathroom vanity feel more calm and clean without all the mismatched colors and labels it just looks so nice in your bathroom or wherever you have it they have everything you need from personal care such as shampoo conditioner toothpaste and all things household products even down to coffee toilet paper you can get food there and more i actually like their chocolate covered almonds and their dish soap i mean they literally have it all public goods is your new store for literally everything so no more searching through every brand to find the best safest products you can find it all in one place where public goods members can buy all their premium essentials in one place with one beautiful streamlined aesthetic y'all that is nice i'm not gonna lie They have done the search for you to find clean, healthy, eco-friendly, and innovative products. The lavender and vanilla candle literally smells so good. I mean, those are taking the two best smells and combining it, am I right? And like I said, the chocolate-covered almonds are great. Um, I can't wait to try all the new stuff because I've only tried a handful of things, but it's all been awesome. Public Goods is committed to making their products healthy and safe for humans, animals, and the environment. And each of their products are ethically sourced and developed to be free of unhealthy ingredients and harmful additives still common in so many other products. With the convenience, great quality, and safe ingredients, I want to recommend this to all people. I've actually been thinking of a cute gift basket to put together for friends like new moms with personal care items or friends that are moving with a really neat housewarming basket and public goods would be the perfect place to start with my basket. Public goods is using a membership model to keep costs low and pass on even more benefits to their customers. So the best part is you can make your first purchase with no obligation. This is why hundreds of thousands are switching to their new everything store. So friends, we've worked out an awesome deal. You can receive $15 off your first public goods order with no minimum purchase. That's right. They're so confident that you're going to absolutely love their product and will come back again and again that you are going to get $15 off to spend on your first purchase. So you have nothing to lose. So just go to publicgoods.com slash woe. That's public P-U-B-L-I-C goods G-O-O-D-S dot com forward slash woe to use the code woe at checkout to receive $15 off your first order. Thank you. I'll add to this too because looking back one of the things that I'm really thankful for was it, I guess in that season or one of the things I learned was that showing up when I went to Belmont didn't necessarily mean that I was going to become successful Mm -hmm. or that I was going to be promised a great job or Mm -hmm. have whatever. But in that season, I just remember being like, I'm in the right spot and giving like everything, like using every ounce of my God given potential in this moment. Yep. And no matter what happens, at least Mm -hmm. I can rest knowing that, like, okay, I'm I'm at least, like, being obedient. I'm not, like, trying to, like, say I was perfect at that. But I I just remember there was, like, such rest in that to be, like, okay, at least I'm in the right spot. And there was so much peace in that Mm -hmm. versus, like, the chaos of before where I was just kind of, like, squandering my life, to be honest. So That's so cool. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, and it's so cool, too, because I know you majored in, like, uh, music business mm-hmm. is that yeah. right yeah okay yeah. and you know that's not necessarily what you're doing but then about two years ago when we were like okay I was like I want to start LO worship and uh who's gonna do it and somebody had a major in a music business and you had yeah. to like recap you know and obviously it's been a long like two-year journey of trying right. to get LO worship off the ground and this yeah. year finally we're going to do it um which more to come yeah more to come but I just yeah. think it's cool that, you know, God was really being intentional in every aspect of your life, which mm-hmm. is awesome. Thanks. And you fought for it. It's Thank cool. you. Well, y'all, you believed in me too. 
when you brought me on the team, so. And you believed in me when I had uh, <laughs> just about nothing but a dream. <laughs> like, well, uh, you're, dream. here's yeah. the plan. <laughs> I haven't started the plan yeah. yet, but here's the mission. It was That's wild. Hilarious. It's been the most wild and fun journey. It has mm-hmm. been. It has been crazy. And Court, I mean, your story is so crazy in so many different ways. But I want to talk about you meeting Taylor. Because, I mean, so many girls want to hear relationship stories, and it was so sweet, and I think it was just such a random thing. And I think so many people think, like, like, they stress about finding the person, and I always say, like, I hate how we even say, like, finding the person, because, like, Mm. finding makes it seem like we have to, like, go looking, and Mm. I don't even know that you would find the person if you were set out to hunt for them because I don't know that you'd pick the person you know like God God has to bring that person to you you know or God will reveal that that person is the one for you it's not like you have to go on this search because Mm -hmm. I don't know that if I was searching the whole world like let me just say first I think Christian is the hottest person ever and the most (laughs) amazing but just even him being um where he was in life he was at a fraternity in Auburn fully college student fully doing that Mm -hmm. and I was in Nashville fully doing my thing I wouldn't have thought that was going to be it, you know, but it was, and it was perfect. And so just say that, just say, like, we put all this pressure on us when actually, like, God has a good plan, and your story seems so random, like, how it happened with the group decks, but just tell the story because it's so cool. Oh, my gosh. It was random, but it's not. Like, when you look through the lens of, like, oh, wow, like, God was so at work, but when you're in that moment at the time, it does feel random. You're like, what is happening? Yep. But yeah, I just feel like it's just so fun to think back because I really would not have met my now husband had I not said yes to Sadie's dream and moved to Nashville and say, okay, let's just do this. And I'm just going to say, she didn't just like move to Nashville, like the classic, oh, I moved to Nashville because I'm from a small town. (laughs) She's from a very awesome place in California, like by the ocean, like living a very good life, like Malibu, I'm talking. And she moved to Franklin, Tennessee. I did. did. Really before Franklin was what it is now, you know. And for something for LO that was not anywhere where it is now, it was crazy. It was a leap of faith. <laughs> and left a big, like, real person job. Oh, yeah, like a legit job. Yeah, real person yeah. job. So this we're is just, way more fun, though. So yeah, it was, yeah. It was worth it. We're just making sure that people know. No, yeah, oh, they yeah. gotta know. Oh, yeah. But I just, I feel like even before I moved, like, backing up to that season, I was living in LA at the time and I was so, like, on the search to find to find my person and it just wasn't working like Mm -hmm. I just dating was just so hard and I remember hitting this point where I was just over it I'm like Mm -hmm. you know what I don't need that and right at that point was also when Sadie had the invitation of like hey like I'm starting this thing like you should come and I'm like you know what I'm not attached this is the time in my life I can go do it and so I was just all in so meanwhile as I was preparing to make the move I was at church with a friend one night um, one of those friends you're like, I don't know super well, but it's a friend that I have. So let's hang out. And I was telling her like, yeah, I think I'm moving to Nashville. You know, I, I really don't know anyone, but I'm just going to go for it. She's like, oh, well, I know this, this kid I went to elementary school with. And I'm like, that's a weird way to start a conversation. <laughs> and she's from Tampa, Florida. And we are currently in Los Angeles, California. And she's like, yeah, if there's anyone like I can connect you. And I'm sitting here like, that is so random, but okay, I'll take it. Like, I'll take any friend I can get, right? Which is just, like, honestly, like, okay. Like, <laughs> really- let's just stop for a second. Yeah, back if, up. If, like, someone I, like, if someone was like, oh, I'm moving to West Monroe, like, or I'm moving – Wherever, I wouldn't be like, oh, yeah, I had this friend from elementary school that I have to let you meet yeah. because, like, That's it's a guy. elementary school. Yeah, they're, 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 it's not like this person had, like, such significance in my life. He was cool in fifth grade. He yeah. might still well, be fun. She spoke highly of him yeah. as a fifth grader. <laughs> I'm you sure know? he was. Hasn't seen him in forever. Just, you know, let me send him a Facebook message. Hey, I mean, Facebook. Really Facebook. connecting the dots wow. there. So I said, sure, that, that's great. Thank you. <laughs> She, um, I did not do any Facebook stalking. I was like, I don't want to go down that Impressive. trail. I was like, I'm not. My friends did. You're but more I mature than yeah, I am. You're very and, you're um, restrained. And Hold so <laughs> this girl, she connected us and via text then. So it went off Facebook to text of just like, hey, I want to introduce you to this girl. She's moving. You could be a new friend. So we texted a little bit and I'm like, this just feels like weird. Like, why don't I just wait till I get there? You know, there's not much we can do. And I did go out to visit. I'm, t- I'm sure in all the details. Hello. Yes. I love yes. it. Okay. I went out to visit and hung out with both of you. And I was supposed to get lunch with this 
fifth grade friend from Tampa, Florida. Oh my gosh. And y'all said you're going to Zumba. And I'm like, I don't even like to dance, but I'd rather do that than go meet. Than go <gasps> I did not know that. I remember that Zumba yeah, hang. And so I, we like, would have been like, no, go if we would have known yeah. that. Yeah. But we didn't. But we didn't. We no, were yes. just, just friends. friends. Just, yeah. Thanks for so choosing. We didn't know. Yeah. I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for the girlfriends over this like random person, you know, whatever. I, I'm moving eventually. I'll see him then. So I, I bailed for Zumba. Wow. Always a good wow. place. <laughs> Which he knows this, so it's you know, awesome. not a surprise. And then, yes, when I moved, I was just like, I guess I should just reach out to this person. His name's Taylor. And um, so I just remember texting him saying, hey, like, I just moved. Want to hang out? Like, yes. What are you supposed to say to someone, you I know? know? The fifth grade it, friend of a friend. friend. Yeah. I was like, okay. <laughs> and... Um, it truly was the sweetest surprise. I just remember going to lunch after church, most casual thing during the day. Wasn't it like Taqueria date? Taqueria, oh, which is so good. It's really good. Yeah. I miss that in my life. So good. so good. And I remember walking in, and I wasn't really nervous, I think just because I had no expectation. Yeah. I was like, I'm just going to do this and show up. Mm-hmm. And I think that's such a good way to go about like your friendships and even like yeah, dates really. like just show up and be confident in who you are and yeah. don't have expectations on it yeah like just be open-handed that's good Court. so that's what we did and we were at lunch for three hours oh so like, i remember what are, that what are they doing i remember i remember staying up some nights like what's court doing she's yeah. falling in love <laughs> like this he's interesting you i were so that long. interested in him which yeah. was like so cute because he is such an interesting person like he there's is. so much to him and it, y'all are the perfect combo like it's so sweet but I love how you said like you you know we're texting him in California but then you're like okay what can we even do and we're just gonna wait it out and then like you came to Nashville and you came to the Zoom but you didn't rush it into like going to lunch and I think so many Mm -hmm. girls think like you know, I'm going to mess it up if yeah. like, I'm going to miss the opportunity. Yeah. And they're like, they're so, like, they put all this pressure on themselves. They're like, what if I mess this up? And so they like, you know, totally just um, ditch their friends for the guy or they start like, you know, spending all their time right. messaging and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's not necessarily bad to message all the time and talk all the time, but it is when it's out of the intention of like, I have to do this because I'm striving mm-hmm. like to, you know, lock this in before I mess it up. Right. And I just love how you just rested in the fact that like, if it's going to be, it's going to be. And then it was, and now you're married. It and really was. Like, it's just incredible, but you just like had such an ease to the whole yeah. journey and that will preach. I mean, you did. I, I remember when you guys were dating and I I'm like the classic, like, when y'all gonna get engaged? When y'all get, like, and you're like, we're just, we're taking it our time. Like, you were. You never rushed. You didn't. And now I look back and I wasn't, I'm not like, oh, they dated forever. They weren't engaged. It was like, (laughs) what were those extra, like, everyone's like, you have to get engaged at the one year mark or whatever. But you're like, no, like, we're gonna, we're, we're still, we're dating. Like, you, you really, like, you and Taylor were very steady. Thanks for saying that. No, truly. And I think I felt that from the mo- the first lunch, like the time that we hung out, I just felt so at ease and comfortable mm-hmm. to just be myself. And I think both of us felt that. Right. And, you know, we we became good friends and then we started dating. And yes, yeah. I was interested from the beginning, but also open-handed. Yeah, you played it like, cool. You know what? Either way, how this turns out, like if we're friends, this is going to be awesome because this yeah. is going to be a great friend. Yeah. But if we're more than friends, it's going to be even more awesome. And yeah. that's, that's how it turned out. But there was never like a rush and I feel like that was just so like a gift from the Lord of me going from wanting to have everything Mm -hmm. figured out before I moved to just being comfortable of like let's just see what happens yeah good oh wow we all need that word like yeah to rush things because we try to rush everything and it's because I think it's because like our world is just going so fast and you just feel like you have to keep up with the pace of the world yeah but there's something just so freeing about stepping out of that fast train that the world's Mm -hmm. on just being like I'm just going to watch that go yes. by, and I'm just going to go enjoy the little scenery, you know? Yeah. It's, it's just so nice. Yes. I want that. Like, in my relationship, I saw all you guys do that. I really have. Not even before this conversation. Like, I've recognized that, and I want to take that into my own future, too, because that was really cool. That's How so you guys good. set that up? And it's okay to get excited about things. Yeah. yeah. Okay oh, there was some getting about the future. Yeah. Yeah, you were. Like, you meet your person, you're like... Oh, I'm so excited, yes. you know, but I think just, yeah, trust in the Lord, like yeah. truly yeah. trusting his timing. Yeah. And that goes beyond dating too. That goes. I, I, that's what everything. I was saying. Like, I'm obviously yeah. not in the dating season of my life, <laughs> very much securely married and have a daughter, but like, I'm like, that's speaking to me. Like just the rush of mm-hmm. life, like just chill and just relax and you don't have to 
you know, you're not going to mess it up. You're not going to mess up God's plan, you right. know, for your life by taking time because, mm-hmm. like, actually God's in that time. Right. It's just so beautiful. Um, okay, I was thinking we could finish this podcast by let's share the funniest memory we've had together. <laughs> and I don't know what that is. So what is the funniest oh, memory that wow. comes to mind? Because, honestly, I can think of a million. Oh, God. We can take our time to think about it for a mm-hmm. second. Okay. We've had a lot of travel and trips together, oh, yeah. which are usually some really good memories and bonding moments. <laughs> Do y'all know what I'm thinking of right now? Are you thinking of the first trip that will really embarrass me? No. <laughs> okay, good. I was not going to bring that up. Thank you. Okay, no. what's the other one? Oh, I was thinking about the time that we were in Canada together. I was thinking that too. <laughs> Wait, when? I mean, I know when we were we went to Prince Edward, Edward Island. I just had a road trip that day. Oh, oh you get to tell the story. Well, no, you have to. You have to. You have to. Go ahead. Okay, I'll start it. <laughs> so, since Steph didn't embarrass me, now I'm embarrassing her. <laughs> That's terrible. So, Steph, Court, and I have traveled literally like all around the world, world. together, <laughs> and it's been so fun, and we have a lot of really funny. <laughs> memories and honestly any one of us could be the the point of embarrassment yes so this 100%. one just happens to land on you i'm gonna take the fall on this we'll one take it okay. next time yeah but, i mean i guess i could share mine too but we'll save we'll, it we'll, we'll save, save it and we'll let you be the moment here thank you okay so steph's from michigan okay and <laughs> like northern i'm not michigan. saying that everyone from michigan is like this but yeah. this girl is from northern michigan and she does not like hot weather at all and but I think her problem is she never wears shorts <laughs> she never wears t-shirts tank tops she always has long sleeves and right. pants on like she's always dressed for northern Michigan even though you've lived in Nashville for 10 years exactly which is a huge part of your problem I uh, exactly I need to actually s- surrender to the fact that I live in a southern state but growing up I don't think I ever wore sh- it was just never got cold if you start wearing like or never, never got, got hot, hot. never got it hot was very cold so yeah so if you start wearing shorts and stuff you might actually yeah. not mind the warm weather right. so anyways she yeah. never wore she, she, anyway, wore, yeah. she never wore shorts she never wore t-shirts stuff like this so we were literally going to the beach in Canada and Prince Edward's Island and we're like going there and we're like thinking about going and laying out because we're like yeah we should just go lay out whatever yeah. and then I'm like stuff you know come to think of it I don't think I've ever seen your legs. Like, I don't think I've ever... Which, it came out, like, so funny. And Steph was like, really? I guess you probably have it. Because I never wear shorts. And so she's like, want to see? So we're standing at this beach with, like, all these people out there. And let me just put this into perspective. It's not just, like, a sand beach. It's, like, a red rock beach because it's, like, in Canada. So something about the glare of the sun hitting the red rocks. And Steph hikes her leg up and pulls her (laughs) pant leg up. And I'm telling you, this is the whitest thing ever. It was translucent. It was translucent. It was was glowing. glowing white. It almost looked angelic. It was so... Oh, I have to show a picture the of that The sun moment. beam hitting it at the right like, angle, uh, and we all, uh, yeah, we, I think we laughed about 30 minutes. I, it was so I, I, I was, like, trying not to embarrass her. It was, like, obviously, like, there's a confident it's, moment. It's a it's vulnerable like, moment, like, moment you know, ladies. It was a brave moment to show us a uh, ghostly leg. ghost leg, and me and Cora were, like, Oh I've my gosh! Like this. <laughs> like, that's a Michigan leg if I've ever Listen, seen one. You just gotta own it. You yeah, gotta own you it. your northern and, leg. Yeah, and Steph, I feel like you have shorts now. I you own do. shorts now. Okay. I actually do. In a world of spray tans, in a wor- be the girl who has the translucent leg. That's, that's the takeaway for this episode. Takeaway. So, well, that's good. Y'all be seeing graphics tomorrow about translucent legs, though. <laughs> so. Oh my gosh. Well, I've oh loved this. Gosh. This has been so fun. And uh, I hope you guys have loved just sitting in on a chat with some of my sisters and friends. We'll do this more with other sisters and friends. I'm sure Court and Seth will be on this podcast episode, uh, this podcast show a few times. Um, but we have some fun episodes coming. And uh, gosh, it's been fun. Thanks Thank for having so much for having us. And we'll bring that story next time. Great. Yeah. We'll see. We'll cliffhanger. Save it. So, cliffhanger. yeah. If People y'all remember, will want to then know it. you will love that. Okay. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for having us. Movie on. guys. Love y'all. Love, love you guys. Too.